Hi, my name is Helen Byrne. I'm an AI engineer at Graphical, and I'm here to talk to you today about how you can accelerate your financial models using AI and IPUs. So first of all, who is Graphical? We were founded in 2016. We've developed a new technology, a new processor called the Intelligence Processing Unit. We have a team of over 400 people globally and we've raised over $450 million so far from all of these investors that you see on this slide. We also have some great finan financial uh, customers so far who have been able to speak publicly about some of the work that they've been able to, to do with IPUs, including Carmel Capital, uh, who have been able to train one of their probabilistic models 26 times faster than they could on GPUs. So in financial modeling, models are often oversimplified to achieve competitive latency. We've been able to use IPUs to use, uh, enable us to use more advanced models. Um, that's because they can run faster on IPUs, which means we get deeper insights and better decisions in a shorter time. One highlight is that we've been able to deliver 300x throughput at the same latency on LSTM inference for time series analysis. So first of all, uh, let's discuss the, the key design fundamentals and then differentiators between IPUs and other legacy uh, hardware architectures. First of all, we have our code and data held in SRAM. This means that we can run our, our training of our model much more efficiently. We don't have to move the data on and off the chip. So we have a super high memory bandwidth. It's about 50x faster than HBM2 memory, for example. So we're getting a significant speed up. Secondly, we have our um, parallel programs which are truly independent. So IPUs have a MIMD architecture, multiple instruction, multiple data. This is unlike GPUs, for example, which have a SIMD architecture, which require large vectors. They have to apply the same operation to all the elements of the vector. They need large contiguous memory arrays to be efficient for, for IPUs. Uh, Contrastingly, we could run efficiently at batch size one. Then we have the popular SDK, which makes the IPU a native graph executor, which is useful, useful for many problems in machine learning. The popular SDK makes IPUs really easy to use. It's been developed completely in tandem with the hardware. You can use your ML models that were written in PyTorch or TensorFlow, and then we take the graph from this high-level framework. We create our popular compute graph with the compute, the communication, and the, the, the data structures exposed. Then we can pile this compute graph to take advantage of the IPU capabilities. Um, and then we build the runtime that can run across thousands of IPU processes. We've also designed the pop vision analysis tools and these are really helpful to provide transparency to the user of what is going on uh, in the processor at any time. So IPUs are delivering unique benefits for financial modeling. Uh, these are both in inference and in training. In inference, it means that we're able to make decisions with lower latency and use models of greater complexity. And in training, it means we can iterate faster when experimenting with, with different model architectures. And we can now use probabilistic models, which avoid overfitting. So uh, some highlights uh, for inference. We have seen that we have a, a 300x higher throughput for LSTMs at the same latency um, versus GPUs. Um, we're also efficient for non-vectorizable models. On the training side, we uh, have an example of 26x faster sampling for MCMC, uh, for alpha estimation and option pricing versus GPUs, um, and up to 13 times a shorter time to train for an RL problem. 
So I'll just take you through some of the benchmarks that we can share with you. So LSTM inference for time series analysis. Uh, you can see uh, on the x-axis is the latency. So at the, the lowest latency for GPU, so the, the, furthest, the furthest left of, of the green dots, that's the lowest latency for GPU. You can see that at that point, we were able to train uh, a, a model, a batch size that has a, a throughput 300 times uh, faster, 300 times the, the size. Um, so we're getting a 300x higher throughput at the same latency, the lowest latency for LSTM inference. Um, and if you care about batch size one, then you can see here that we get 7x over 7x, a higher throughput uh, on an on a IPU card at nearly four times lower latency. So um, this is for inference still for batch size one. Um, then we're also uh, efficient for non-vectorized models. So we've seen that IPUs are really efficient at models that are really difficult to vectorize, like uh, these tree-based models with sparse trees. So on IPUs, you could put a separate tree on a separate thread and parallelize the model instead of vectorizing it. So alpha estimation with MCMC. So MCMC is able to give you uh, predictions as dis distributions, not, not just point values. This helps avoid overfitting and it helps deal with noisy data uh, and handled nonlinearities. But MCMC has long been considered too computationally expensive and is not, not as well used as, as it could be. We've been able to use uh, IPUs and due to our um, high memory bandwidth, this was one customer's uh, implementation where they were able to get 26 times higher throughput for their model using uh, running it on IPU versus running it on a GPU. This version is uh, an out of the box uh, MCMC uh, sampling model for uh, written in TensorFlow probability. So it's um, very much apples for apples comparison. And we still see over a 15x uh, faster time to train running on IPU versus running on GPUs. Risk estimation. So risk estimation involves um, estimating different risk factors. And the neoclassical factors are quite hard to estimate. They're not observable and they're nonlinear in many cases. Um, you can use a variational autoencoder. These help to identify these risk factors and capture the nonlinear relationships between the observations. Linear methods like SVT, SVD are not efficient in, in this case. We've been able to run uh, VAE models on IPU with nearly a five times uh, faster time to train uh, on IPU versus on GPU. For portfolio rebalancing, you can formulate this problem in terms of RL um, and a NARA model of this kind can be trained 13 times faster on IPUs compared to GPUs. And now for some different data types. So first of all, looking at images, the efficient net uh, family of models is the current state of the art for image classification. Uh, the B0, efficient net B0 model achieves over 77% validation accuracy on ImageNet with only 5 million parameters whereas ResNet 50 achieves over 1% less than that with five times the parameters. So for this, this state-of-the-art model, we can train it seven times faster, seven times higher throughput on IPUs versus on a GPU. So we are much more efficient at these new uh, innovative state-of-the-art models for image data. Um, and same for inference 
like at, at the, the lowest latency, we can see we have uh, 14 times lower latency and a 15 times higher throughput running on uh, IPU versus running on a GPU. And finally, for language data, we're able to train BERT base in 25% less time on an IPU or on IPUs. Um, and that's running at 20% lower power. And for inference, at the lowest latency, we can provide a two times higher throughput versus GPUs. So that's uh, a lot of benchmarks that I've shared with you so far. Uh, many of them are applications used in, in financial sector. Um, and we've been using with our customers um, and they were all based off our first generation chip, our Mark I chip. So finally, I just want to introduce you to our new second generation chip and systems. It's called the, the, the new system is called the IPU M2000. So we've made three innovations with our Mark II platforms. We have firstly reset the bar on AI compute with the world's most advanced processor. We've also designed a new memory subsystem that delivers breakthroughs in bandwidth and density. And thirdly, we've built a new communications fabric designed from the ground up for large scale AI. So first of all, to compute, we're unveiling the, the largest processor in the world in terms of the number of transistors. We have nearly 60 billion transistors on the new Mark II uh, chip. We have nearly 1500 independent processors. And this delivers 250 teraflops of compute and has 900 megabytes of super high bandwidth in processor memory. This slide just gives you, uh, shows you in more detail how much of the chip really is dedicated to memory. So the orange parts uh, here are memory and the red parts are the compute that's coupled with the memory. Um, and you can see how really it is a, a memory centric power efficient chip. So the second innovation is a new memory technology called IPU exchange memory. This combines our on-chip high bandwidth memory, which is 100x the bandwidth of HBM memory, and also uh, overall memory addressable from the IPUs is up to 450 gigabytes. This combines the ultra high speed memory inside the IPU processor, together with connected DRAM, which creates a memory system where the processor has access to the entire model, even if the model has hundreds of billions of parameters. And all of this is understood by the Poplar software, and you're able to seamlessly take advantage of the massive memory and the huge bandwidth. And lastly, the IPU machines can be connected with our ultra low latency fabric, to up to, to, which supports up to 64,000 IPUs. So you can form large clusters of machines working together if you need to chain, tr train a very large uh, model in a, in a short time. So this is the IPU machine M2000. It contains four of the IPU Mark II chips, um, which totals one petaflop of IPU compute. Um, the, the M2000 product will be available in different configurations from a single machine, stackable up to, to eight, or in our scale out solution, which is a pod 64. The pod 64 is built from 16 of the M2000s uh, and comprises 64 IPUs. So performance wise, we're seeing uh, from seven, eight, nine X speed up on training and inference workloads in NLP and computer vision models so far from our Mark one to our Mark two systems. 
If you want to read in a lot more detail uh, about the IPU architecture, there's uh, a paper by Citadel that was uh, published from um, regarding our first Mark I architecture. Uh, and it, it goes into a lot of detail. And it's quite interesting if, if you really want to understand a bit more uh, about the, the micro benchmarking uh, of the chip. So our IPU is, is letting innovators create the next breakthroughs in machine intelligence. Thank you for listening and I'll be available for Q&A.